I'm Chewy Mew, and welcome to my channel, but more specifically, welcome to another Chewy Mew video, where today we're going to be taking a look at a figure that I got several years ago, definitely over a decade ago. I recently reviewed the, uh, uh, I lost the figure, where is it? The Iron Man, the Toy Biz Marvel Legends Iron Man Series 1, and I said I got it maybe in 2008. I don't know, I have no idea when I got it, but I also did get Hulk from the same wave. So, quick disclaimer, this foot is actually from the Ultimate Green Goblin Build-A-Figure Wave Green Goblin by Hasbro. I just glued it on here so that way Hulk can have two feet. Probably going to take it off and give it back to uh, back to Ultimate Green Goblin. Or, I don't know. I pr I don't know. I tried to see if I could fix it so we could have, like, the ankle hinge. It didn't work the best just because that's how, unfortunately, how the figure broke. Um, but as far as the figure goes, he's really big as the Hulk should be. You see, compared to uh, compared to Spider-Man, since just like Spider-Man, definitely a lot taller than him as he should be. Um, and I really like, right off the bat, I really like how enormous his arms are. He's got, like, huge, like, gorilla-proportioned arms, which looks really cool, you know. Um, yeah, it looks really cool how enormous the arms are. And he's incredibly veiny and stuff. Let's bend the knees here and let's take a look at the face. I can't bring him in closer because he's too tall. He doesn't bend down enough. There's the face there. Move the, the light like that so we can see the... Or no, let's turn the flash on so we can see the detail. Oh, yeah, there you can see the detail. Yeah, look at that. That's pretty cool. So he's definitely got a very monstrous looking face, which I think looks pretty cool for Hulk, having a very monstrous, like, it looks kind of like almost a supervillain kind of style face, you know? The hair is kind of dusty there, or maybe that's how it's supposed to look. No, I think it's supposed to look like that, because it's like that all the way through. Um, the teeth are, in, or they're not individually sculpted, like, in the mouth, but they're sculpted very good, and they have, like, black paint lines in, the, in between them, so you can see each tooth individually. He's got, like, a green tongue, kind of like it's sticking out. Looks like the tongue is like kind of right there on the edge. He has like a like a cut plastic. Or no, never mind. That's just like a, that, that's just like the the shading to it. He's got ears, obviously. Really cool face. He's got a bunch of wrinkles here, wrinkles on the nose. The eyes are also really cool. They're big, bright green, and then he has like it looks like heavy like black eye show, shadow around it. When you turn off the flash, you can't even really see the the face details. But the face details look great. Um. If you have them like this, we don't need the the flash on, do we? No, we don't. It just makes like the makes like the lines weird right here. Um, but yeah, so the chest is also crazy ripped and stuff. He's got like nipples kind of sculpted under here. They are hidden, but if you look at it from like this, you can't see them. They're like on the bottom part when they should be like up here. But either way, you know that's fine. Um, I will say his waist looks a bit like too narrow. That's to do with articulation, but uh, you know we'll get to that eventually. Look at these crazy ripped arms. He's got the big shoulder. I feel like his shoulders could be a little bit bigger. I don't know. Uh, he's got tons of muscularity here. He's got veins everywhere on the hands, the fingers. They even sculpted, like, the knuckle parts here. That looks pretty cool. They're not like Hasbro. They're all smooth. Where Hasbro only sculpts, like, the nails on the end. They don't sculpt, like, the, the knuckle wrinkles and stuff here. Inside of the palm is wrinkles here as well. You know, ton of detail on this guy. This was Toy Biz in 2002. Like, before this, they only had, like, one year... Of section scale superposable figures, and that was with uh, Spider-Man classics like these ones, and these ones have like a ton of detail as well. So th they hadn't been doing that for a long time at this point. It was only like a year that they're making section scale superposable figures. This guy's a little on the less superposable, but still definitely more posability than like '90s Toy Biz Hulk figures. Back, you got more muscles here, and they sculpted the muscles for the butterfly joints on the back as well. So that's cool. He's got like weird back spine kind of looking muscles. And then the pants are also incredibly well done. You can see all the wrinkles here. Wrinkles everywhere on the pants like they would be. The rips here aren't like... I mean, no, I was going to say they're not too crazy looking, but they're they're pretty good ripped. He has rips on the knees here, and they painted the inside of the knees green. So it actually looks like it's ripped all the way through here. Because I've seen some Hasbro Hulks where this inside part is painted purple. So it looks like only the knee is missing missing the shorts or the pants, and then the inside is, is not. That's kind of dumb. But that looks pretty cool like that. It looks really nice. You bend the knees, it looks like it's still ripped. Yeah, that's a really nice touch. Um, you can see all the sculpted here. It looks like the are all the sculpting here. Like the crotch as well has like these lines going all the way across, and he has like the zipper sculpted down. Uh, on the back, he doesn't have pockets, but you do see the seam right here for the butt, and you see the seam on the sides of the legs there. Just ton of sculpting on it, and it's like sculpted in this light gray plastic, you, or light light purple plastic, like you can see in there. That's the color of it. And then all this wash makes it look darker. So it looks like he has, like, multiple colors. You can see, like, some parts 
looks like black. There's like a very dark purple. There's a lighter purple like this. And then there's an even lighter purple like this part. This part didn't get as much of a heavy wash. And it looks cool. You got like four different colors in the pants. As far as the skin goes, there's not as many colors. You can see the torso and the arms look kind of different color. The head as well. Um, but you can see it looks like paint brush strokes on it. I don't think I did that as a kid. I think that's just how it looks. Yeah, it looks like he has, like, brush strokes on his back, like a custom. That's kind of weird. Uh, it's not too big of a deal considering it's on the back. But everywhere else, it looks pretty good, you know? Like, it looks really good like a Hulk. It doesn't look like so much... It looks kind of like a monster kind of Hulk. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, like, Hulk, obviously, he's, he is a monster kind of technically. I mean, by, defini by definition, I think Hulk is a monster. But this looks kind of more like... Like, kind of first appearance Hulk, where he's kind of more of, like, an antagonist that, like, the, the U.S. government is trying to defeat. Or, like, not, not the whole government, but, like, the, the military is trying to take him down because he's basically a monster. And then eventually he becomes, you know, a hero. Um, this always been a little bit kind of crazy because of his powers and stuff. But either way, I, it looks really cool. The detail on this guy is phenomenal, you know? The face is painted good. Like, the individual, like, the sculpting the teeth and then painting the black lines... Just makes them look more noticeable. Like, he actually looks like he has, like, gaps in his teeth, which... That looks really cool. Like I said with the Iron Man figure, this this does, this does looks like if you took Hulk from the comic books and then turned that into a three-dimensional object, and then this is what it is. And I like the crazy huge gorilla arms. That's It's really cool. They're, like, halfway down his knees. It just looks really cool to me, you know? But let's go over the articulation here, which is sadly the only, like, only issue with this figure... The head doesn't look up at all. He looks down all the way. He can't pivot. He can't tilt side to side. There's a rotation here at the top of his neck and a rotation here at the base of his neck, which uh, usually that's supposed to allow you to make the head look up, but but his hair, this little hair poof on the back, it hits the neck so he can't look up all the way. Uh, the arms go up, not quite 90 degrees, but they go up a pretty decent amount. Um, they rotate all the way around. And these butterfly joints that allow you to bring the hands in so you could do like his, uh, his clapping isn't quite of the clapping shaped hands, but you can. Fun fact, there's also an alternate Hulk figure. Uh, it's like a variant where he also comes with like a cloth t-shirt. I'm trying to find that figure. Well, I don't have that figure, but I have Abomination, or not Abomination, uh, the Thing, who has a bendable like finger joints. Like they're like bendable wire, so he could do like the Hulk clap gesture. If you have the Hulk with the bendable like rubber fingers or like the bendy wire fingers, you could totally do the clapping hand and like fist and stuff. Single bend in the elbow. Unfortunately, you don't have, like, bicep swivel. Um, but Iron Man and Captain America Wolver... Or, no, Iron Man, Captain America, and Toad... Toad doesn't have any articulation, pretty much. Only Iron Man and Captain America have bicep swivel. They could have totally given it to this guy, but... I mean, I guess that's kind of fine. Then you get rotation here... Or, yeah, rotation here in the wrist, and then you get, like, a... The four fingers move together, so you get, like, an almost... This hand is pretty much just, like, an open hand. This one is kind of like a fist, a little bit. And then you have an upper torso articulation, which would, you would think would work like a... Like it's, it's a diaphragm job, but it basically just rotates side to side a little bit. And then he has the below, like, diaphragm... Or not diaphragm, like the waist joint, which doesn't move at all, really. It, like, that's the range you get. Move his arm out of the way. His arms are getting in the way from the seeing the joint. That's pretty much all the movement you get. Not really a ton of movement. So, pretty much all he can do is, like, rotate... Yeah, he can pretty much just rotate this guy. The same thing happens happened with Captain America. Iron Man does get a bit more, like, leaning back and side to side with this joint. But this top joint, for none of the figures in Series 1, actually works. I don't know how that happened, considering Spider-Man from a year before has, like, a pretty decent diaphragm joint. Tilting side to side doesn't work, but, like, rotation and stuff. I don't know why these figures didn't work too good. Because Iron Man has the same articulation. His mask fell off. The torso part doesn't work much, but the bottom joint, going back, you get, like, decent, like I did in the review. Depending on how I upload these, this should be the one before it, but you get, like, you at least get, like, tilting and stuff out of this joint. Oh, the other guy, Hulk, you don't really get that. All right, so that's, that's like, that's that's unfortunate with Hulk, but as far as the rest of the posability, you can kick the leg up almost all the way, the hand out of the way. You can just kick the hand up all the way. Uh, you don't have, like, the splits kind of articulation. You do have a thigh swivel here. You get a single bend in the knee, which that's kind of unfortunate. And then you get an ankle pivot, which is uh, pretty decent. Unfortunately, since you can't spread the legs out, that's not really too useful. And considering this foot is also... The original foot is missing. He doesn't have the ankle pivot or the hinge. 
you know, that's kind of unfortunate though. And then the foot goes, it hinges that far forward and that's, that's neutral like that and that's back. So, so that's, um, that's a bit unfortunate. So your articulation on this guy is pretty limited, a uh, pretty weak. He still does have more articulation than like the, uh, Spider-Man Classic Series 1 Man Spider. I mean, this guy's like ball joint limbs. So that's, that's a plus there, but, um, but yeah, so lower articulation on this guy. This was also when Toybus was figuring out, I feel like Toybus kind of did this because I feel like at the time they were figuring out how to put a lot of articulation on a 16 scale figure, which is why like in 2001, you got pretty good articulation. Like the stuff that series two figures or like Marvel Legends series one improved from like these figures was, um, like the, the diaphragm joints got worse, but they, they discovered, they figured out bicep swivel and ankle pivot. And this guy, that's what he's missing here. And then, you know, fast forward three years or two years from Marvel Legends. And then you have like super poseable stuff like this with multiple butterfly joints, multiple neck joints. Mine's broken. Finger joints, all sorts of articulation and stuff. So Toy Biz, I feel like, uh, like they wanted to make this guy. That's also why they threw Toad in there. So they could basically fill the roster and give you a super detailed figure with barely any poseability. It's supposed to be for like a movie wave or something. I think that's the story. And then Hulk here got low articulation, but they were more, I feel like Hulk was more of a figure. They were testing out incredible sculpt and paint wash. Like you see the face is sculpted and painted really good. The pants as well. The whole body sculpted really good. But when it comes to paint, the, the, the star students here is the head and then the pants. Those are like the super, super heavily paint tapped details on this. Captain America and Iron Man don't have as much heavy paint taps to it. And so like they were testing out super posability on those two figures. They were testing out really, really intricate and paint app detail to figures. So eventually you get stuff that's both. Both. Probably, I think this is the most articulated uh, Marvel Legends Spider-Man figure there is. Uh, Snapshot Spider-Man does have more only because he has like a diaphragm joint. But he doesn't have the same neck. So I think because the original one had a the sort of like a disc hinge neck at the top. And they needed a disc hinge in the base of the neck. So you could hinge from down here and up here. And rotate from both spots. So a lot of articulation. So this guy technically is like the most articulation out of any Marvel Legends figure ever, I think. Six inch, six inch size though. Um, uh, like I think Galactus and uh, the Sentinel HasLab figures do, but those are like $400. This is seven bucks. So, you know, you know what I mean though? Like as far as Spider-Man goes. So, and that's like pretty much everything, you know, that's like the pinnacle when it comes to uh, like posability and like articulation or like whatever, you know what I mean? Uh, with highly, with great paint apps and sculpt and articulation all packed into one. And so we had to get less articulated figures like Hulk so we could get better articulated, more sculpted figures later. Like, you know, face off Hulk, which has just as much sort of paint washing detail, except even more and more articulation as well. So uh, that's pretty cool. I like this figure though. I played with it as a kid, just like the Iron Man Captain America. I didn't care too much about many other superheroes other than Spider-Man. Pretty much only Spider-Man is the only hero I really care about especially to this day, but I still got it because, like I said, with Iron Man, it was really cheap. But either way, that's all for this video. Let me think about this figure, and I'll see you guys in the next review.